Sakshi Jesse koi nahi. In 2004, he worked in Sakshi. He also featured as one of the contestants in reality television show Big Boss 4 in 2010. In 2013, he was awarded the Best Actor Award by Indian Tele Awards and IT Award for the lead role in Balaji Soap Opera Parichai, Nay Zindagi Ke Sapno Ka. In 2018, he debuted as a film director with My Birthday Song starring Sanjay Suri in the lead role. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, welcome, Kailash. Thank you. Looking forward to this. Samir, what inspired to take up acting as your career? Uh, well, actually, it started as a hobby. I mean, I discovered acting when I was about eight years old. Hmm. And uh, I used to be a fairly introverted kid. Hmm. And uh, when I discovered acting or theater at that point in time, I realized that I could express or hide behind other characters and say what I wanted to say. So that gave me that freedom. So I didn't have to be shy because it wasn't me anymore. It was, I was pretending to be somebody else, but the feelings were real. Mm. And when I discovered that, it was like freedom for me. It was just like I found, oh yeah, this is great. I can be like this and be good at it and enjoy it. So pretty much by the time I was eight or nine, I had decided I'm gonna be an actor. And um, yeah, I remember in fifth grade, I told my teacher I'm going to come back as a, uh, as a hero or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm uh, one of those few guys who probably became an actor before he knew what films really were. Mm. I mean, I hadn't seen too many films then. So that was, it was more for how I felt as opposed to, oh, this is what I want to do. So it would uh, be, you know, naturally called as a natural instinct of becoming an actor? Yeah, it, it is. It is. I mean, you find it's like, uh, you know, how some people just write. Mm. They don't go out to write. I mean, or they don't want to be writers. They just write. It comes to them. That's the, their way of expressing themselves. Or musicians will just, you know, create music. So to me, it is my way of expressing myself. And it's almost catharsis for me. So mm. which, which essentially was a hobby, which made me feel good. And uh, then I had a series, series of events that I went through, which made me finally come down to say, no, this is what I really want to do. Because in between, I deviated a little bit. So, yeah. Mm. That's how you landed up in acting. Yes. Samir, you are a film and television personality. Now, mm -hmm. we both know that though both mediums are different. The film mm -hmm. has a 70 mm experience. You have the audience in the theater. But TV is somewhere you become a household name. You are there every day. Mm -hmm. As an actor, what medium gives you the maximum satisfaction? See, look, there's another one that's theater. Theater is another medium yes. that you have, you know, and uh, digital platform now is another yes. one. See, to me, in terms of um, experience and sense of satisfaction is concerned, every medium has its, you know, goods and bads. Mm. For example, uh, films. Mm. The good thing is you have a bound copy, you know what's going to happen, you can pace yourself and stuff. And, uh, but the, the downside of a film, it takes too long. It takes mm. almost a year for it to be completed, to be released. And even in a day, when you're shooting for a mm. film, Chances are that in a, in a 10 day, 10 hour shift or 11 hour shift, you shoot for only one hour. The mm -hmm. actual time spent in front of the camera is not more than an hour or so. So mm -hmm. the rest of the time, you're just waiting and keeping yourself in that frame of mind, which is very challenging. Mm -hmm. So you spend 90% of your time waiting, whether you're in a vanity van or you're in a makeup room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's tough. That's that's a process I don't like, personally speaking. Mm -hmm. Television, on the other hand, is got like you know neck break speed. Like you know, sir, kal ka hai, aaj khatam karna hai, kal ka episode hai. Mm -hmm. So you're on your toes all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would be. In fact, it, it might happen that you are doing your makeup. You get the script then, on the way from the makeup room to the set, you're learning your lines and scenes and performing. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have time to think too much. Mm -hmm. Which is can be, you know, for, for a person who's doing TV for the first time, that can mm -hmm. be very unnerving because films are pretty, you know, you take your time, take your time and everything. But that's the good thing about television. And I like that. I don't want, I hate sitting around and waiting. Mm -hmm. So that's the part of TV I really like, you know, the busyness, the fast, okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And also because it's a, it's a constantly running thing. So you have an opportunity to work on your character. Mm. and see what, what is working, what is not working. Mm. And contrary to what people say, I think uh, television brings out better performances also. Okay. Because they're more instinctive, because you don't have time to plan it out. It, it's, mm. it's possible. Yeah. It, it's so possible. I, would, I would, digital is like a good balance between both. Mm. You have the time 
but it's not so long a time like a feature film ki it's going on and on and on for example uh, i think bajia mastani uh, hmm. i asked sanjay ji and i said how long did it take to shoot it it took him 267 days oh so if you're shooting for 267 days for a 3 hour film that means net in one day you're shooting only 30 seconds yes so if you see it from an actor's perspective hmm. that's all day 10 hours for 30 seconds i mean i'd be pulling my hair out so hmm. yeah so it just has its own thing but yeah personally I'll, tv has been kind to me quite honestly hmm. and so I'll, i'll i like tv yeah you like tv sure i like tv yeah i got one good idea that i mean what according to you if i may hmm. are the essential ingredients that make up a good actor what according to you a good act- actor must possess look it's first thing you have to have the talent mm-hmm. acting is not any different from music or mm-hmm. singing mm-hmm. if you're tone deaf mm-hmm. then no matter how hard you try you can't tell for example a musician very often will know, even a layman who likes music can tell when he hears a tone that's off off key mm-hmm. right it's an instinctive something in here mm-hmm. some people are tone deaf mm-hmm. they cannot tell one from the other mm-hmm. okay that's the talent you have that your brain can process that likewise as an actor mm. you need to have that thing in grain when you say something is off mm. the instinct for example if i'm doing a scene i know this body you tell me oh you went off here there's something that didn't go right so i think that is like the base if you have that you will go a long 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 way because that tells you your instincts are correct mm. so uh, which again comes to talent and dress is all skill I mean, if you want to act, you got to work on your skills, and the actor as a profession is a totally, totally different game. I mean, that's a different, totally different ball game. I mean, I always say that anyone and everyone can act, because in the end of the day, what are you doing? You're lying, right? You're yeah. pretending to do something, mm-hmm. and everybody lies sometimes. It's a other. mask. Yeah, it's a mask, and everyone can do that. That's not. that difficult and you do it in real life with your friends with your family so nahi yaar tabiyat kharab thi but actually you didn't feel like going out mm. right but mm. to do it in front of a camera where there are 100 people around you mm. to block those people and the audience knows your line because they know you're playing a character mm. and convince them for that moment that maybe it's true mm. which is called suspension of disbelief Yes. Now that takes that takes training. That takes a lot of things, calm, calming your nerves, da da da. But the first thing that the instinct is, you know, you can't teach acting. If you you either can act or you can't. Mm-hmm. If you there's can, no middle, so there's no middle way in it. Look, um, like I said, can you actually teach a non-singer how to sing? Not really. Same goes with acting. You, if you are a non-actor, which if you don't have that impulse. Mm-hmm. that you can't teach act you can do competent work mm-hmm. i mean like in singing that you know there's some people who will just kind of get through and keep the melody going that you can do mm-hmm. but yeah i don't think you know if you're a non actor you will not be drawn towards it unless you are in it for glamour and money mm-hmm. but if you're an actor then it's a matter of how versatile you are what kind of things you're good at and bad at this is a it's a huge different universe which is you know i, I love it this is fascinating absolutely so this is something you know you need to have the instinct for it maybe the killer instinct and if you have it in you then somewhere some somewhere down the line you will find your way out see look now again if you just want to learn acting mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and not take acting as a profession there are two different things mm-hmm. sure. okay so if you want to learn acting as a hobby mm-hmm. yeah you, know, you can be part of theater workshops and learn how to you know um, express yourself get somewhere close and blah 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 and enjoy it but to be a professional actor is a different ball game that's you know it's very little of acting and more so of how you can deal with the things that come around it's like you know people fancy themselves as seeing a managing director or whatever you know a ceo but they don't really know what kind of aptitude is required mm-hmm. you know the man management mm you know so that to be a perfect i tell people that all the time whenever who wants to be an actor i say trust me i mean if you don't enjoy the process of acting mm. and you're doing it because of the fame and the girls and whatever boys mm. then you will quit you can't survive it it's impossible so mm. yeah being a professional actor is very different from being able to act sure yeah. 
that's so yeah. any role particular in a tv serial or a film which you feel that you aspire to do or you feel that you you could have done it better that somebody else has done yeah oh uh, i don't know <laughs> could i have done better or you aspire ye role shayad mujhe milta to i would be happy you know simple my my daughter's running around in the back no no worries no worries <laughs> uh i had one dream role which i i always when i saw that because i personally like roles and characters which have conflict in them okay i i love that i love that because then there's more to play with mm-hmm. because and uh, one of my childhood favorites films and the character was uh, amit ji in shakti mm-hmm. when he is has this love hate relationship with his own father Mm-hmm. and so in the way he wants his acceptance mm-hmm. on the other hand he hates the fact that when he was kidnapped his father was willing to let him go if you see shakti it's a that kind of a role so mm-hmm. i mean i don't know obviously can't do it better but mm-hmm. you know um when you say can you do something better or worse it's always an actor gives an interpretation mm-hmm. to every character they play they bring their own for any any role you take which is a well written role not a commercial film Mm-hmm. then actor brings his own persona his own you know depth or lack of it or whatever physicality into it mm-hmm. so there's always a different shade that you know an actor will bring mm-hmm. it totally depends on what director is looking for i mean a certain person will bring in high energy someone will become a little more subtlety mm-hmm. because it's the same way of communicating everything mm-hmm. but uh, yeah if you were to ask me that's one of my favorite uh, characters and i've played a uh, lot of good characters yeah i mean because i'm pretty picky and choosy of what i do mm-hmm. so a lot of my character i mean the character i played in parichay i loved it there's um, my first show english show i did mouthful of sky i mm-hmm. loved the character it was it was crazy it was you know just incredible mm-hmm. so yeah you know it's something which has more depth mm-hmm. it, it, it's to me like i said to me acting is more of expressing myself mm-hmm. so if i'm going to be somebody else for that much time will i enjoy being that person will it be fun for me sure. you know i mean the, like the, the kind i hate most is when you're goody to shoes and smile and say hey huh? i hate <laughs> that i i you know it's just it is so difficult for me if i get a character set up a clean cut good boy hair and i'm like oh god not again because that is just you know that's too much of effort for me so yeah I mean, you know, Bollywood recently has come under a lot of scanner for a lot of things. Hmm. You feel that it is a result of this industry being a soft target that sometimes it cannot just stand up for itself. That's why you know, it's a lot target for. Ah, uh, of course, it's a soft target. I mean, that goes without saying. I mean, because anyone can pass any judgment, because what recourse do people in the industry really have? Hmm. And I think that pretty much goes for any celebrity, even I'm sure cricketers, for that matter. Sure. I mean, you can pass any because you know there are two, three things in in which everyone is an expert. Mm-hmm. Everybody is expert in films. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ask someone how was the film, ha, but editing as he was like, the music as was was like that. So you know, they're an expert. In cricket, in other field, everybody is an expert. अरे पहले उसको भेजना चाहिए था. Politics again. ऐसे नहीं कैसे मारना चाहिए था. हाँ, उसको कैसे करते हैं? धोनी को इतना पहले क्यों बाद में क्यों भेजा? So everybody is an expert. So and because these people are known, so they become. targets because you kind of point a finger and by virtue of that you kind of come into the limelight hmm. and there's no recourse the other person can do because it's not like you do something in the politician he might put you behind bars like it has happened uh but if the uh, film star does that hmm. a he has no recourse b at the end of the day it's the masses who make you a star hmm. and so my stand is very simple that you know if you uh except the bookies you have to accept the big bats it's simple as that's a na- that's the name of the game is is it fair i don't know but that's mm. the way it is i mean you know that's that's the nature of the beast yeah they got to do that absolutely so you believe that naturally because of there is a lack of being recourse or you or you can say unity yes bollywood you know it's that what what i mean it's not as much as a unity what can they collectively do Mm. and what as an industry mm-hmm. what can you collectively do if xyz says you're a jerk mm-hmm. mm. cuz that comes under you know freedom of speech mm-hmm. so collectively a lot of people say this that but there is personally i there is this concept of industry we have 
Mm. I don't really understand it because mm. I'm not really sure what really it means. I mean, what do you mean there is an industry? Because it's not like a company in which you have a managing director who's going to control everything. There is no one big guy sitting making do's and don'ts. You're mm. here pretty much to fetch for yourself. Mm. If you're in demand, you will get more work. You will get more money. If we, if the masses don't care much for you, you will not get good work and not get good money. Mm. So it's not like an industry is protected. Yeah, the basics are there in terms of the rules and regulations, but you know this whole thing of this one unit, mm. it's not a company. So it's just, you know it doesn't work quite that way. Naturally, it's, it's more at an individualistic level. So naturally, what recourse as a person has absolutely. Now, Samir, since this is a masterclass, we have. Uh, people from all over the country joining us live on Zoom, and they'll be asking you questions uh, to our master today. Uh, <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> and we have Asta Maheshwari. Asta, can we have your question, please, for Samir? Hi, sir. Hey, Asta. How are you? Hi. How are you? Very well. Very well. Tell me. Uh, so I have a question related to, uh, I was actually uh, watching fashion just two, three days before. And so I have a question related to that. That's one of my favorite films because it really inspires me to get into this field. And my question is, I, I actually observed that networking is really important for an actor to get into this field because Priyanka, it actually helped Priyanka Chopra to, you know, get an easy way to get into this industry. So does this really help in this real world? Uh, Master, as far as networking is concerned, personally, I suck at that. That's one of my drawbacks. And for the longest <laughs> time, I used to say that, uh, you know, only because of networking, and I used to look down upon it. But now <laughs> I've learned, I wisened up that uh, you cannot make your shortcoming a virtue. You can't say, I'm not the kind of guy who's going to network. Networking is nothing but people's skills, right? <laughs> Can you relate to people? Can people relate to you? Do they would like to work with you? Would they not like to work with you? This is normal, mm. regardless of what industry you're in, right? It's the energy yeah. you give. So networking, so to speak, I don't know. I mean, if that's the right word to use. I mean, knowing people, I know who's who of the industry. But exactly. the point is, can, are you able to connect with the people? And then that goes for whichever industry you pick in. I mean, there is talent. There has to be hard work. And there has to be people's skills. Your ability to connect with people and work with people. I mean, you have to ask yourself that if you were the guy who was the girl who was giving somebody a job, would you like to work with that person? Mm -hmm. So very yes. often it's a personalized thing because it's a project where you get like-minded people together. So yes, yes. networking, not to use it in a negative uh, this thing, uh, tonality. Mm -hmm. People's skills is very, 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 very important in every field in this thing, unless you're into research in which you're just blocked off. You know, it's, we live in a networking world... Networking help the actor to get an easy way out. I'm sorry? I mean, just to shorten levels. I mean, does, does networking does really help? Easy way out she's does it help? Yeah. I mean, it yeah. actually gives the direct approach that you can just go to the casting director or you can just get the role in just one or two take. Whereas for a normal actor like us, we really have to pass a couple of auditions, you can say, or a couple of levels. See, like I said, it, it's two things. You, there is no shortcut, trust me. I mean, right. you know, th there is no shortcut. You have to go through the process. It's about mm -hmm. you, your ability, the impression you leave, the impact you leave. Yeah, there might be one odd exception. You can say, Acha, so and so knew so and so and knew, da 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 da. But in the yeah. end, it's a business. No right. one's going to give you work because you just, that person likes you. Right, you know, there are crores of money going in just because the person seems to like someone. They won't mm -hmm. even cast their own son. I mean, you can't do better networking yeah. than that, right? Yeah, we, get, <laughs> we get to hear that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, it it helps, but depending on that, it's not going to help you. But yeah, very much your ability to connect with people is very important. Very, very important. You know, like if you if you go on a social gathering, for example, and that's my weakness, personally speaking. That okay. uh, I, I, you know, I, I can only talk work. I, I can't just make small talk. So people's perception is like, you know, okay, stay away from this guy because he's gonna just, you know, give lectures. <laughs> yeah, because you know that that's not my personality. Some people are very, you know, outgoing and stuff. So if you are like that, that's fabulous. Yeah, I think that's good. But mm -hmm. I, can an outgoing person do it? Not do it? I don't know. Whatever. No, that does help. 
but Bye. at the end of the day uh, naturally it is not uh, you know it does not provide you a ticket for easy way out but naturally networking will help in such time thank you so much ashtan thank question. you so much sir thank you kailash sir thank you thank you now we have lavi sharma lavi can we have your question please ah uh, yes ah uh, good evening sir uh, sir as you know uh, we all know you have an experience of both uh, movies and television yes. and uh, how much we all know that television shooting uh, happen daily and it is like uh, at some extent playing a character on a daily basis can have a huge impact on one's personality so do you remember any of your character which you played has has a long lasting impact on you or on your personality in a positive way or anything can be a look it 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 there is a spill over for that moment so chances are if i'm doing a certain kind of character and more than the character is the scene you're doing if you're doing a lot of emotional sequences or you're playing this dark guy chances are you will find yourself but even after pack up for some time you would be in that dream of mine so it takes you a little while to kind of and especially for someone like me who i i like to pretty much stay in character you know through the shoot close to you know not drift far away because that makes my job easier so yeah obviously it, it, there is a carry forward thing but as a person i don't know i mean uh i don't think so i think you know because there's enough time outside it anyone who says that it changes them first you know personally i haven't had that kind of experience that you know i change the person life ch- ch- changes you not that particular acting thing so yeah that's why it does have like a momentary effect but not that after you are after the pack up is done you're home and in the same character you'll be here with your no, it's just that when you come back home your wife might not like you too much for a bit <laughs> because you're like in your own frame of mind your own zone and all of people don't understand is that the amount of energy emotional energy it takes when you're performing and when you switch off then you're almost dead in terms of emotionally drained so you don't have emotions for other people for some time so yeah your family might not like that too much <laughs> yeah thank, thank you so much thank you thank you for your question we have shumaila now shumaila can we have your question shumaila khan <laughs> Hello, sir. Good evening. Hey, Shamila, how are you? I'm good, sir. Uh, my question is that, uh, uh, like you know, we all know that Bollywood stars, you know, troll किए जाते हैं. तो कुछ लोग ऐसे मुझे लगता है कि कुछ लोग इसको purposely करते हैं. कुछ भी चीज को जबरदस्ती put करके Instagram और social media पे. like you know famous hone ke liye so i wanted to know is a kind of, it's a kind of a business or uh, you know aapko bhi koi na koi troll karta hoga to how do you deal with this let me understand ki jo stars hai wo khud ko janmuj ke troll karwate hain aisi cheeze bolte hain jisse wo troll ho thinking that that is is that the reality uh yeah I haven't met a person like that who just, who galia khane ke liye ulta seedha bole. So I don't know. Maybe there are. I don't know. It's not me. But yeah, you all get trolled. Yeah? If you have strong opinions about anything, uh, personally, I am fairly vocal about what I like, what I don't like. Okay, and I might go against the grain sometimes. And to me, especially my Instagram thing is is for me to express and share myself with my fans or friends. and that's that some people will like it some don't like it but that's the way you go you know there's nothing but yeah purposely saying something to get a result out of it, i don't have that guts but maybe there might be some people like that i don't know i mean just you know for the heck of it saying something ki be to be in news uh, i don't know i can't speak for anybody else no not me not me though sure but you know this matlab you feel that naturally it is not something which is uh, part of your personality but it there might be chances sure it is just it's a very personal thing yeah i mean not everyone is same some people for example you know uh, perceive instagram as a mode of being popular and getting you know likes or business i mean i get that all the time i have these companies that approach me will say okay look so uh if you tie up with us then every time you say hello to a fan you can get x amount of money for greetings and stuff and mm. i've never done that i've never promoted anything on my insta as yet because i just kind of feel something has to be personal 
everything can't be up for sale, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I I do ads, I do movies. Even on my Instagram, I'm going to be promoting to eat this, buy this. So I am personally, as of now, not comfortable with that. I, I said no. I mean, if I had to wish someone and I had the time and patience and energy, I'll wish them anywhere. But say, oh, give me this much amount so I can wish you. It doesn't work for me though. Not not right now. Not right now. I mean, I have a lot of friends who do that, but I can't. As you rightly said, nowadays these apps have come up who have those celebrity tie-ups, and people pay money to just get a, a birthday greeting. Or a voice note, or a video note. I mean, a next sure. level of uh, celebrity engagement. Can I? Sh- you you won't believe uh, this. There were like there were about five seven companies out there that they're kind of mushrooming up, hmm. and so I didn't know didn't know what the whole concept was. So I says, "What hmm. do you mean?" So they said, "We'll send you." So essentially, what they have in their website, they will have the photograph of the actor or whatever celebrity. Hmm. Under that, they will have a a number, an amount of money for a greeting. So it's like having a price tag saying, "In this release, I will say I love you or congratulations or happy wedding." I mean, come on, not everything is for sale here. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Okay, no. I mean, that's just I don't know. Maybe it's old fashioned. Maybe I'll change. But yeah, to right no, now I'm not. Your belief, and, and it's completely fine. It's your belief. See, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not here to judge anyone. Anyway. Stand up for certain beliefs that we believe in. So that's yeah, the- and and I and I don't judge people who do it. It's fine if it works for you because they say in the end, you know, that's business. Mm. I still haven't reached that level of treating it like business. I still like, I don't have people operating my Instagram. I would do it myself. I will read it myself. I will respond personally. So yeah. it's still personal as opposed to a professional thing. Absolutely. We have Ilma uh, Layak. Uh, can we have your question, Ilma? Hello, Samir sir. Hello, Kalash sir. Hi, I can't see you. Who are you? आज मेरा क्वेश्चन आपसे ये है कि जैसे आप मुझे आप शिवा मूवी का रोल बहुत फेवरेट है मेरा उसी तरह आपको आपकी कौन सी मूवी का रोल आपका फेवरेट है अह कौन सी मूवी का रोल मेरा फेवरेट है अह ओह गॉड फैशन आई थिंक अह फैशन अह आई थिंक वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट कैरेक्टर्स आई थिंक फैशन आई लाइक एंड आई इवन एंजॉयड आई हेट लव स्टोरीज इट वाज फन Uh, doing that, so uh, yeah, you know, every character make apna kuch hota hai, jisse maza karne ka. But fashion was the most challenging role because a lot of people had said no to that role. So to do that uh, and uh, and and people liking it was a big thing for me. So yeah, fashion. And actually, fashion. You know, I I was I can remember uh, fashion. I think sixteen, seventeen years before. Uh, we completed. Uh, I think seventeen years. You're right. Maybe seventeen. Yeah, years. something I like that. I was in school, and uh, it was a Diwali release, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's you're correct. You're correct. It's that October, November release. We have gone to see fashion, and like a great film. I mean, even today, yeah. if it comes on television, you can just watch it completely. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was just uh, and great performances, you know, uh, you know, Kangana and Priyanka, and Madhur with his whole thing for reality. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he did some bold stuff in there. So uh, that's yeah, would be one of my favorite characters to play because it was not easy to go this way or that way. So I had to kind of balance it out. There was a thin line in between, and and you you managed it perfectly. I mean, I yeah, I was trying not to you know be unbelievable at the same time. I don't want to be a caricature. Mm-hmm. you know so i was doing very subtle things that people probably you know at a subconscious level would just like i was shaping my eyebrows mm-hmm. uh, i was putting on kajal mm-hmm. there's some little subtleties that i was trying that you know without me being overtly mm-hmm. feminine it would kind of get through so yeah that was kind of fun absolutely we have pragya here pragya your question Hi Samir. Uh, so my question, so my question is, so I'm a big fan of yours since Jassi Jassi Koi Ni. I was a kid, <laughs> and my question is, uh, do you get more uh, as a writer? Do you get more, uh, you know, content and more experimenting uh, for platforms like OTT? I was seeing your Be Wafa Si Be uh, Wafa, so mm-hmm. I end up rooting for Infidelity. So, uh, <laughs> so I ended up rooting for that. So that was something which is not, pra- you know, actually not real in practical life. So, uh, do you think writing for OTT platform is changing human acceptance for complex emotions? See what's happening with OTT platform. Uh, 
is firstly it's right now not regulated right so this was the first outburst that people had from censored you know films and stuff television is even worse in terms of you know what you can show what you can't show so this was like the first time the filmmakers the writers the whole they said okay let's throw caution to wind let's just see what we can do because nobody can stop us right so initially there was a lot of you know uh, cutting edge stuff or experimental stuff or bold stuff some were even just raunchy for the sake of being raunchy to attract you know, eyeballs but now there it has been a while now that things are settling down that the content is what's really important earlier it was just like you know for the sake of nudity for the sake of nudity i mean you know because hey no one's going to stop us but yeah because uh ott platforms you swatch it in your personal sub personal experience like television is more of a family experience there'll be like three four people right and theater is even more so it's like you know bigger friend groups will go so you can afford to go edgier in ott because even if you want to watch it they can watch it in their own privacy so yeah it, it has definitely opened up uh, a lot of room and stuff so i don't know where the line is going to be drawn mm-hmm. i'm sure somewhere sooner or later someone's going to come along and say hey wait a minute you can't be showing anything you want there has to be something so but yeah you're right i agree with you that ott does uh, for writers it's like a dream thing for you know expressing themselves thank you thank you we have one more question uh, the person has not joined us uh, live but i can see on my chat box is uh, how was your journey in television or film so far and how easy or difficult it was um what are you doing sorry my daughter is <laughs> um uh, how, how is your how is your journey in films or television how was the journey or how different was it how was it and how easy or difficult oh lord uh, i mean uh, there is easy or difficult is a very relative term right hmm i okay. mean it, it i can say it's difficult and someone's going to turn around you never slept on a platform or a railway station so what are you talking about hmm. right uh, on the other hand i've gone through phases for a year and a half when i did not work at all which uh, can also be extremely taxing i mean i've uh, i've seen it has made me the person that i am it has taught me everything i know in life that there are going to be ups there because this is such an unpredictable unforgiving profession because like any other, any other profession if you're a doctor you're an engineer you build on what you've done mm-hmm. right 10 years from now you're a bigger chartered accountant you're a bigger doctor better at practice an actor is pretty much as good as his last couple of stuff mm-hmm. okay so it helps you build that thing because you see extreme highs that overnight you would be somebody that you never thought you would be and overnight it's also going to disappear mm. so it prepares you for life in terms of life lessons that you learn and mm. the projects in which you dismiss and say oh god i don't want to do this mm. and they become really great and the projects which you're dying for they don't materialize so it makes you helps you unless you become an alcoholic or something to deal with it you become far more philosophical about it you know you can't say well, okay that's life you know this is happening well, that's okay that's happening so it makes you like that so my journey uh it's been a learning learning experience from what i was because i remember uh, and and i was very fortunate also i came to bombay without knowing anyone the second day i reached bombay i got one of the biggest ads that was to be done in bombay that was the, the ad for the first mobile phone in india motorola so in that sense hey man that's a great thing so i even the first film i did was the most expensive film uh at that time china gate mm. right and i got it within a year of being there without knowing anyone i just walked in somebody said they're looking for a new face i walked in showed them what i could do and they said okay we want you so in that sense it's very easy right but and so by that time to give you an idea of the extremities and by that time i thought i had arrived i've signed with the biggest director you know at that time uh, you know rajkumar santoshi it's the biggest film i'm working with nasiruddin shah om puri blah 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 and uh, so i'm like thinking you know man this is it life has begun no more ads i remember this one statement i used to say no to ads say i need my name on it mm. i was like 25 26 years old saying yeah 
But the film got re-edited. A lot of my role got chopped off. Okay. I had tons of offers, which everybody said, don't take them. And then wait for the film to release. Film did okay. But as much focus it was supposed to be on me, it wasn't there. So even though people liked me critically, saying he's good, but there wasn't a hero, hero film. And then I sat at home for over a year, not knowing what happened to me. So it's, you know, and there's some films like Bhagban. I said no to Bhagban. I didn't want to do Bhagban. You know, I said, nah, yaar, who's going to do Bhagban? Kya hai, Everybody, some bigla hua bachcha, this and that. But somehow they convinced me and look at that. And people still remember Bhagban. Yeah. When I did Just See, I, I, I was, at that point in time, I wasn't doing TV at all. Because that, at that time, TV was looked down upon mm. for film actors. So, and I had this big lull and this film TV things were coming. I said, okay, I'll do one TV thingy. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so this serial came my way and for six, seven days guest appearance. I said, ah, hai, yeah. I didn't even know. I had never watched it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was. I knew it was some glasses and braces but I'll key. That's all I knew. And I said, okay, I'll do it for five, six years. Fine, you know, I'm not doing anything anyway. And that role, on, role became one of the biggest roles I've ever done. It went on for a year, which was a five-day guest appearance. Mm-hmm. So you, you learn so much. So, I mean, I don't know. It's to me, I'm always growing as a person, you know, it makes you more even keel to see because the things you least expect might happen and the most dependable things don't happen. I mean, yeah, I made some mistakes also, but it's, 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 it is okay. I mean, it's, it's, life. A, it's life. I mean, it really is. I mean, can it be better? Yes. Can it be easier? Yes. But can it also be worse? Far much worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still consider myself fortunate that I'm sitting here talking to you 20 years after my debut. So that's not bad. Absolutely. We have Yash Luthra who's asking you a question. Uh, what is the biggest aspiration for you for being a celebrity? What is the biggest aspiration for, for me being a celebrity? Meaning, I, I don't think I understand the question. Can you? And this is what I can decipher from it. Can you please ask the biggest aspiration of Samir sir for being a celebrity? What I can understand is that, oh, inspiration. He just corrected, sorry. Uh, <laughs> biggest inspiration of you for being a celebrity, yes. Okay, I don't know what's being a celebrity got to do with an inspiration. I, I, I keep life very simple. I just try to be the best that I can be, you know. Mm. I know what I'm capable of. Mm. And unless until I've given my 100%, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied. Mm. So uh, insp- inspiration with, I don't know if he's implying other people, mm. I'm inspired by everyone around me because whoever have, you know, achieved what they wanted to achieve, I mean, in their own ways, uh, you know, there's inspiration all around if that's what he's talking about in an individual. Mm. But I don't idealize any one person. I mean, you look at, you know, the big, big Khans, you know, what they've achieved. Mm-hmm. Gazillion people, yeah, but they, I really look forward. I mean, admires athletes and musicians are, I mean, I have a thing for music. Mm-hmm. So I really admire that. And I mean, look at something like, you know, a sport. You know, if for an athlete mm-hmm. to finish a race, it takes about nine or 10 seconds. And he would probably practice that for 10 months. Mm-hmm. True. So, yeah, it's inspiration all over uh, for me. You know, I don't know. When, when I was a little younger, I wanted to win an Oscar. Uh, <laughs> So I, yeah, the possibility is kind of reducing right now. I'm not quite sure, but hey, I'll do my best. If in the end it happens, it happened, doesn't happen. I know I tried my best. So that's it. That, that's the mantra, you know, that you have to give your best. And then if it happens, very good. If not happen, then also you've done your best. Yeah. I mean, that, that's all. I mean, that's all you can do, really. I mean. No regrets. I, I don't like regrets. I hate looking back saying, Kash, I have done this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't look at the past. What's happened, whether it's good or bad, it's, it's gone. gone. It's gone. If it's, mm-hmm. I've achieved something, tomorrow, today is now what? Mm-hmm. That's, my, that's how I think. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Samir, for joining us this evening. On sure. This of Masterminds by Governance Now. And thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for all your questions, for being with us today evening. And thank you, Samir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Jai Hind.